This is Office Talk with Annette Stepanian. Welcome back to another episode of Office Talk. Thank you so much for the sweet comments for the last few episodes. You guys have been sending me emails and messages, and I truly, truly appreciate those notes. Each week we are putting out an episode and it does take a lot of effort and time to pull these episodes together and just knowing that you guys are listening and more importantly that it's resonating with you means so much to me. It means that we're doing something right, hopefully. (laughs) So in today's episode, I want to talk about some investments that I think you need to be making in your business if you aren't already. When you started your business, hopefully it was with the intention of turning it into a profitable business. Otherwise, your quote-unquote business starts to look like a very expensive hobby. Oftentimes, folks, they start their business because they have a passion, they have a skill set, they have some talent that they want to share with the world, and maybe make some money off of it. But they don't go into it in terms of, okay, how am I going to make money? And then what ends up happening is they are working really, really hard and then don't have much in their bank account to show for it. Now, here's a secret that no one is going to tell you about running a business. No business can truly grow and succeed without investing in it. Well, maybe they are telling you that, but you're choosing not to listen because you're like, I don't have a lot of money to spend on my business. (laughs) We've all heard the old sayings before, you've got to spend money to make money. And when I talk about investments, yeah, sometimes they are financial in nature. And recently for me, I've had to make some financial investments in my business, and I'm going to be honest, it freaks me out. I always wonder, am I going to get my return on my investment? Am I going to be spending all of this money only to be disappointed and out of money? And there's also this element of, I feel like I'm taking the money away from other things like my family and some of the goals that we have. And so it's always a struggle for me when it comes to making a financial investment in my business. But one thing I've come to notice over the years is that when I do make an investment, there is this transformation that happens. It's an elevation. And here's what I mean. Let's say you pay for something. Maybe it's a hairy, scary amount spent on hiring someone to help you, or maybe you've just joined a group coaching program or a mastermind, and it really hurts to to hand over that credit card or to hand over that check. But once you make that commitment and that financial commitment, you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak, something comes over you. Part of it is this confidence that comes over you because you're starting to value yourself. You're starting to value your business. Or maybe what happens is you think, holy moly, I just invested a bajillion dollars into this. I have to make it work. It kind of gives you this push to make sure that this doesn't prove to be a lousy investment. And we've all been in that situation where you get something for free versus when you have to pay for it you don't appreciate the free stuff as much, right? It's when you pay for it, that's what you truly value, and that's when you show up, I think, as your best self. So in today's episode, I'm gonna share with you three investments that every business owner should be making. And a little teaser, they all are not financial in nature. Isn't that great? You don't have to pull out a credit card. (laughs) No credit card required. The first investment, any guesses here? Okay, well, should come as no surprise to you that it's all about your legal and financial foundation. And of course, I'm going to say this, right? You wouldn't expect anything less of me. And it's because of what I do. And I've shared so many different episodes on the podcast, and I'll make sure to link to some awesome ones if you're new to the show or if you haven't had a chance to listen to some of the older episodes. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I will say this. I really encourage you to not overlook this part of your business. You're obviously listening to this show, so you're interested in it. I oftentimes see people kind of think, worry about this. Well, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. This legal stuff should be one of the first things on your agenda. If you haven't already done it, if you've been running your business and you've been dismissing it for all these years, girl, it's time to get it together 
and put some time and investment into this area. And of course, I'm going to say contracts should be at the very least one of your very, very first investments, especially if you're a service provider. I have the honor of working with so many different clients and I consistently see those who invest their time and their money in getting a professional contract pulled together have an easier time booking bigger clients and better clients. And so this means not only is that contract helping them bring in money, but with all the terms and conditions in there, it's also helping them keep the money that they've earned. If you want to learn more, I'll link to those episodes in the show notes that you can always find over on the website. The first investment also included investing in your financial foundation. So I feel like the legal and the financial kind of go hand in hand when it comes to the ick factor for a lot of folks. It's just not a sexy part of business. But here's the truth. If you don't have a good grip on your finances, you're losing money. End of story. And as my dad, who is a CPA, always taught me, it's not about how much money you make, it's about how well you manage the money you have. If you're spending money on your business and you're not keeping track of how much and on what, you guys, you're leaking money. I don't know, I've seen clients, they literally throw receipts in old shoe boxes and shopping bags and they just, they don't know what's going in and what's going out. So we need to get you on a system. If you're good with finances, if this is like your jam, and you have the time and energy to keep tabs on your own bookkeeping, great. There's tons of pretty affordable software out there that can help you with this. If finances are not your cup of tea, find a bookkeeper or hire your mom or your sister or someone who likes this stuff to do it for you. Having your finances in order is gonna help you save money. And if it's not obvious how, well, let me break it down for you. First off, one really, really important thing. If you have your books in order, or at least the majority of it in order, when it comes time to do your taxes, and whether you're working with an accountant or not, you have a good record of what you've spent your money on so you're not missing out on any deductions. Obviously, having a good handle on your finances also means where are you kind of leaking money? How often have we subscribed to maybe a software or a program or something that like a gym membership, right, that we're not using? Those things add up. And so what I do in my business is I keep track of all of those things and every year or so I go through and I determine, do I still need this software? Do I still need this service, this subscription? And if not, I get rid of it. And especially with technology, things are constantly changing, as you know, things are evolving. And so some of those tools that you might have invested in day one, they've become obsolete or maybe they have been integrated into a fuller version of some software. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. My friend once posted on Facebook, which I thought was really, really enlightening. Every dollar you spend, so in your life, let's say you go out to eat and you spend $10, You need to have brought in $20 in order to have spent that $10 because off the top, you have expenses, you got to pay taxes. There's certain things that before you even get a distribution to yourself in form of a paycheck, there's a lot of money that's going out. So when you start thinking about it that way, you're like, wow, this thing isn't really costing me 10. It's actually costing me 20. You start feeling like, okay, I need to be conscious about where I'm spending my money. And if you aren't keeping track of it and you don't know, then you can't fix it. Okay. Investment number one was all about setting up your legal and financial foundation. Okay. Investment number two doesn't really require any money. It requires maybe some of your time. And so the second investment is investing in people. In today's fast-paced world, we forget that there are people on the other side of a transaction, a social media comment, an email, or even this podcast episode. Hey! So you're building relationships here, and you're growing together. And it's very easy to overlook that in the day-to-day, and I'll admit, I wish I spent more time investing in relationships than in all the hustle and bustle of running a business. 
Long-term business success doesn't exist in a silo. We can't do business unless there were people on the other end who needed what we were offering. So people are the ones who send you clients. People are the ones who become your clients. People are the ones who open opportunities and doors for you. I want to share a story from one of the law firm partners when I worked back at the law firm. She was a pretty big rainmaker, and I love that it was a she. (laughs) Um, She was a tough cookie, but she brought in a lot of business. And I was talking to her once, and she said, well, what are you doing to cultivate a book of business? And here I was, I was a young associate, And, you know, we were representing really, really big companies, like Fortune 500 companies. And I thought, well, how am I going to go, you know, as a young associate, go network with the head general counsel of this big Fortune 500 company? How are you guys expecting me to bring in this kind of business when I'm kind of so low on that proverbial totem pole? And she said something that has always, always stuck with me. She said, Our expectation isn't for you to go become best buddies with the current general counsel of XYZ Corporation. What you should be doing is networking and meeting and connecting with other lawyers who are at your same level or near your level, right? So maybe a few years out of law school. Because those are the people who are going to one day become the general counsel, the head of these different companies and organizations who then will become your clients. And that was just like, I don't know, was such a big aha for me. And I know in this world, sometimes it's very desirable to kind of go after that like celebrity person, whoever that is in your industry, or that person who seems to have a huge audience or a huge business. And that's fine. Go network with them, go try and connect with them. That's cool. But my point here is, Don't discount the people who aren't there yet. You could probably build stronger ties with the people who are where you are now, but are going to be one of those bigger names tomorrow. And the good thing about investing in people is that it doesn't really have to cost anything other than your time. So whether you are setting up calls with people to check in with them on a regular basis. Maybe you have a mastermind pulled together where you guys check in every few months and see how you guys can help with each other. Those can all be free. Maybe you're hiring people to come help you. That you are investing in that person because you're investing in their business. You're giving them work. And as a total side note, One thing that I've noticed that's happened in my business, not always, but when I have hired people or when I have maybe joined a mastermind of some sort, when I have made that investment of my time, of my money, I've actually been able to get clients out of that. Again, that wasn't my intention when I went into that situation, but it was just a nice benefit that came out of it. Because what happens is, is you get to know others in a group and they get to know you and then you become top of mind for them and they become top of mind for you. Again, that doesn't have to be the intention that you have to get something out of every interaction, but it just naturally happens. And finally, the third investment is investing in your own knowledge and growth. I always joke that if you really want to get to know yourself, start a business. (laughs) Maybe you can relate because, man, it really can be a roller coaster in terms of, it just brings a whole lot of stuff up. And with that, whether it's your personal growth and your personal development, but also just your knowledge, your technical know-how, your expertise, it's going to be no surprise if I tell you business moves quickly. Life is moving moving very quickly nowadays, and you got to keep up with the current trends in your industry, in your market, so you are on that leading edge. Now, investing in your knowledge also doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Obviously, just by being here and listening to this podcast, you're investing that time. You're reading books, taking courses, help anything that helps you run your business better. Now, one thing that I have to say that I've done in the past is when I have joined other 
groups and masterminds. I don't do it very often, but when I have, I've noticed that my growth skyrockets. And what ends up happening is you start, again, elevating yourself because now you're surrounding yourself with people who are in a similar place or maybe like a little further ahead of you and you kind of start seeing what's possible and you start letting go of a lot of those limiting thoughts that you have. And I'm going to be honest, I used to, when I was first starting out, I used to feel kind of defeated because I thought, oh, you know, this person is like at this level and gosh, I wish I really had a business like hers and I'm never going to get there, right? But now I start, I've changed my thinking. I, th- I think, well, hey, like this person's there. That means I can do it. And hey, maybe that person's willing to tell me or share some of his or her experiences about how I can get there faster. Now, this just brings me to a way of rephrasing some of my thinking, and it came through a book called The Question Behind the Question, and I'll link it in the show notes, and I would encourage you to pick it up. It's a very short read, and again, I didn't even read it. I just picked up the audiobook. (laughs) It's not very dense, Uh, and it was a nice, quick listen. Basically, the premise of the book is about personal accountability. And instead of constantly blaming or finding fault or finding reasons why something can't be done, you rephrase your questions. How can you do something? What is it going to take for you to get that result that you want? And it's been a really great book because I now notice I catch myself. If I start thinking like a negative thought or a negative belief about something, I'll immediately switch it and rephrase that question in a way where it empowers me to take action to get that result that I want. So definitely check out that book. And actually that kind of fits into the last investment, which is investing in your knowledge base and your growth. So that was not planned, but that's how that came out. Okay, you guys, that wraps up another episode. Hopefully this has reshaped your perspective on investment and investing in your business. Investments don't always have to be expensive and they don't even always have to be financial in nature. It could be investments of time, of people, in knowledge, and these are all key ingredients to developing and growing the business of your dreams. Okay, I'll be back with a brand spanking new episode next week, so I hope you'll join me again. 